My name is Ramey Kalir. I'm a assistant professor of learning technologies at the University of Colorado in Denver. All right. I'm at I annotate for the third year. Um, I'm an education researcher. I study how educators collaborate and learn. And for the past number of years, I've been integrating hypothesis into my own teaching. I've been studying how educator communities pick up annotation practices, and I see annotation as a is a unique way of changing the ways that not only people read and write the web, but then consequently how people like educators or other professionals use those media practices to learn. And that to me is an exciting new development on the edge of digital media, learning, and design. So here's, here's something I've always appreciated about I Annotate. Uh, as an educational researcher, a uh, most of the conferences that I go to are with other educational researchers. You know, again, I'll meet some educators or some technology designers here and there, but when I go to professional conferences, I'm hanging out with other people who are researchers and scholars, and specifically, you know, within not only education, but learning technology, learning design, or the learning sciences. And so to be at a conference like I Annotate, where I can hear from journalists, I can hear from scientists, I can hear from technical developers, I can hang out with people who are actually comfortable, not only in their own domain, but are crossing boundaries. That's a real strength of this conference, and it allows me to think about annotation in new ways. It allows me to not only kind of keep up to date with current technology developments and questions in the field, but to also get a really strong sense of how do I look at this problem differently? How can I ask different questions because I'm in such a cross-disciplinary space? This is becoming a normative media practice for a lot of people. It's being incorporated into workflows, it's becoming a part of scholarly production, it's becoming a part of scientific research, it's becoming a way in which journalists fact check their work. And this is becoming, again, like a kind of, this is every day for some people, not everyone. And so I think that presents two interesting then uh, opportunities. One, for people who still are less familiar with or recognize the kind of everyday professionally relevant, interest-driven opportunities of this technology. How to get those people on board I think has always been you know, a big question. How do people discover this work? How do people get engaged? How do people sustain engagement over time? But then for those people who are doing this every day, who are really motivated and engaged and kind of integrating annotation into their professional or interest-driven practices, how do we then learn from what they're doing? Because those to me, exhibit new forms of learning, new forms of media use, new forms of engagement that will come to better redefine the future of those fields. And I think so there's an interesting kind of way of continuing to get people engaged in what's becoming normative practice and then learning from people who've created these normative practices to then better understand what does it mean to be a journalist now? What does it mean to be an educator now? What does it mean to be a researcher now? We've got work to do on both ends and I think that people here are really attentive to both aspects of that continuum. Absolutely. Oh, there's no question about it. I mean, it's informed my pedagogy and how I design courses, how I think about students collaborating, the way in which I have students engage deeply with texts and the kind of social practices and discipline-specific practices that are integrated into annotation workflows. I use it in my own teaching for peer-to-peer -peer feedback, for some aspects of formative assessment, certainly for ways of engaging with text, new content, what do we make of it, what do we understand, what do we not understand. So there's an entire pedagogical piece of this, which is very important for me since I began my career and will always be an educator in some form or fashion. As a scholar, it's also changed how I write, how I organize documentation, how I find linkages across sources, how I collaborate with colleagues. We may you know, create a private group on a document or two so that we are essentially doing a lit review together in preparation for, for, for writing. It's changed processes of peer review. It's definitely become a part of my scholarly workflow as well. Uh, there's a great story that I like to reference. Uh, in my field, the field of the learning sciences, there's a very well-known, highly regarded journal, Cognition and Instruction. And they chose to create a blog recently to essentially share preprints of certain articles with a public before that article becomes officially part of the print version, 
perhaps behind a digital paywall, et cetera. And when I saw that happen, I reached out to the editor and to the authors of some recent pieces and said, now that this work is essentially a open preprint, could we annotate it? Could we have scholarly conversations? And the answer was yes, and we did a little organizational work. And next thing you know, we've got graduate courses, professors, the authors of that article having scholarly, robust conversation in the margins of a preprint. What I've heard from other projects I'm involved with where scholars are sharing open access versions of their scholarship, whether it's a preprint or it's the final version, and they're inviting discourse amongst colleagues, students around that particular space, I have heard anecdotally that those ideas might inform subsequent writing, that the ability to even defend a decision or a viewpoint or a kind of scholarly move has been helpful to, of course, see how readers are responding to your work is really important. And this becomes another channel for more publicly accessible, becomes a channel for more uh, openly networked, and it becomes a channel for more, uh, I think, egalitarian discourse around these scholarly uh, practices. We can essentially transition from what might be considered more like scholarly monologues into more democratic dialogues. This conference for me represents a really important edge of three things I care a lot about. How we define and work with what counts as knowledge. What is knowledge? Who generates it? How is it archived? How is it put, of, put to use in the world? This is a great group of people who just think a lot about all of the informatics and the analytics and all of the things that go into, and the human processes of knowledge. That matters a lot to me. And again, as I mentioned earlier, there's a very kind of intentional cross-disciplinary orientation to then thinking about the way that that knowledge grows in different contexts for different people. And then the third piece is it's about design. And it's the design not only of technology, but it's the design of social relationships. And there's a kind of socio-technical orchestration that happens. And this community thinks about that a lot and how to design for sustainable, people-powered change. And that's, to me, really important.